welcome to the 2013 Newhall School District Candidates Forum brought to you by KHTSAM 1220, The Signal Newspaper, COC Cougar News, and SCV TV. There are four candidates running for three spots on the Newhall School Board in the November 5th election, and we've got three of those candidates with us today, uh, starting with the challenger, uh, Sandra Bull. And we have two incumbents with us, Phil Ellis and Christy Smith. There is a fourth uh, incumbent. His name is Brian Walters, and he had a prior obligation. We'll be hearing questions today from a panel of journalists. From the Signal newspaper, we've got Luke Money. From COC Cougar News, Taylor Villanueva. And from KHTS, we've got Perry Smith. We're going to kick it off with a 90-second opening statement from each of the candidates. We're going to hear first from Sandra Bull. Hi, I'm Sandra Bull, and that's Bull, B-U-L-L, -L, just plain Bull. I've had, had that name my whole life, and hopefully it will uh, pay off in an election because you'll remember me. A little bit about myself. I'm married to my wonderful husband, Earl. I have two daughters and two granddaughters. Um, I come from an education family, uh, three of them are in education. My granddaughter Rachel is a math department chair in high school in the San Fernando Valley. My, um, her husband Ruben is a PE department chair in the Santa Clarita Valley. And my other granddaughter Jill is a college advisor in Santa Monica. Um, I just retired from 25 years of teaching. I was an assistant principal in the Sulphur Springs School District as well as a teacher there. Um, I received my bachelor's from Master's College here in the Valley and my uh, master's degree from University of Laverne. I have always wanted to be a teacher from the time I was a child. I played school. I, I loved teaching. I loved being an administrator and I really didn't want to retire, but it was time. Um, I, I have a lot of experience. That's why I want to run for the board. I was fortunate enough to be chosen by the California Department of Education to be on the Distinguished School Board. I did examine Wiley Canyon and Old Orchard, as well as the Rose Seiko, um, Castaic Middle School, and numerous other schools. Um, I know what it takes to, make, to run a school. I know what it, it, um, it means to be in the classroom. I've been there. I had the experience. I'd like to, to be on the board. Thank you. The one thing I should point out to the candidates, uh, so they don't think they're in a soccer game, is that uh, the way we're keeping time today is off camera. We've got, uh, yeah, they have, uh, they get yellow carded when they have 10 seconds left, and they get red carded when their time is up. So, uh, Phil Ellis, you're next with 90 seconds. Remember, red card means you're out. Thank you, Leon. Um, first off, I'd like to thank all of you for sp sponsoring and putting this together. It's uh, nice to have this opportunity. Uh, my name, as Leon said, is Phil Ellis. I, I am a current uh, president of the New Hall School Board. I have been on the board for a four-year term this time, previously served back in the 90s for a four-year term, and I've also served a four-year term on the uh, Hart Board. Um, I've been experienced in uh, or involved in education through those things. Also, I was a uh, site council uh, when my sons were in um, middle school. Uh, I have three boys who have gone through the New Hall School System and the Hart System. Um, so I've been familiar with the education here in the valley. Um, my wife, before she passed away, worked at the uh, Sulphur Springs District, so I was involved in uh, school things for a number of years. My background is as an attorney, um, and prior to being an attorney, I was a bank auditor. I have an undergraduate degree in economics from Occidental College, and uh, MBA from SC, and my law degree is from Golden Gate University in San Francisco. Um, I think that my education, my experience in um, both audit and legal uh, is very beneficial for a school board member and uh, I think that my track record uh, speaks for itself. I've been involved in uh, education and children's activities. I'm also on the Y board as well. So I see my time is up, so thank you very much. And Christy Smith, opening statement. Hello, thank you for this important opportunity to be here and share with the community what the Newhall School District is all about and the reasons why the three of us are running for this position. Um, I have been a longtime advocate of public education. I have a bachelor's degree in political science from UCLA, and I've continued my passion not only for education but public policy throughout my volunteer and my professional career. I was a policy analyst at the U.S. Department of Education, and then once I started my own family, we moved back to Santa Clarita, and I've been very active in the schools ever since. 
I have uh, really enjoyed the privilege of being a New Hall School District board member for the past four years. I've been a very active board member. I was the leader uh, of our Measure E campaign, which garnered us a $60 million bond with the support of the voters. And I would like an additional four years to stay on the board to make sure that those funds are expended wisely. So thank you for having us. And now we enter the question and the answer phase of this forum. The first question is going to go first to Christy Smith, and it's going to come from Perry Smith from AM 1220 KHTS. Thanks, Leon. The New Hall School District sites repeatedly earn high API scores, despite these sites having a high, dis <clears throat> excuse me, a disproportionately high number of free lunch students. What are some of the unique challenges associated with this student population, and how can New Hall School District continually improve its service in this area? Thank you, Perry. That's an excellent question. We do, in fact, uh, enjoy the highest API in the Valley, as you said, with the largest proportion of children who tend to be having the greatest needs. Uh, we do that in a variety of ways. One is we have a tremendous staff. Uh, we have an excellent instructional staff who are constantly aware of emerging trends in the field of education and also very on top of teacher training. And the way we continue to push that paradigm is through innovation and collaboration. Collaboration is a very important part of everything that we do in the New Hall School District. Each of our 10 sites is what we would call a professional learning community. And what that means is each of our teacher teams support one another in the instruction of students. And we are assessing as the students learn from uh, pre-lesson, throughout the lesson, to the end of the lesson, and teachers really use that data and information to then inform instruction moving forward. And sometimes that even means um, a reassessment, going back and looking at those, what those students need again. Uh, so it's very important that we do that and honor innovation in our district. Same question to Sandra Bull. Oh, um, would you repeat the question, please? Sure, oh, I wow. was, uh, the New Hall School District sites repeatedly earn high API scores. Uh, despite having a disproportionate number of free lunch students compared to other Santa Clarita Valley school districts. Where, if possible, can the district improve its service to these students and how is it meeting that need? Well, as you, as Christy said very eloquently, um, New Hall School District does have an API of 905, which is the highest in the Santa Clarita Valley. They do have uh, excellent teachers. 83% of their teachers are, uh, have six years or more of experience. That goes a long way. They also have a tremendous amount of professional training. I have, I worked in the uh, Saugus, I mean the Sulphur Springs School District and we looked to New Hall to, for their writing program, we looked to New Hall for their uh, McGrath model, which is a tremendous model which, which reaches the um, ling English language learner students. They have uh, training for their teachers the best in the valley. They also have the um, Common Core Standards which are, are coming up, which are gonna be implemented. The Common Core Standards, they already have their 1,400,000 allocated, 900,000 for staff development, and they, they've, already, they've already started with their K through two teachers. So the Common Core Standards, the biggest thing coming up, New Hall is on top of it, and they'll continue to do it. The question goes to Phil Ellis. A um, couple points I'd like to make. One is um, there has been a recalculation on the API scores and all but one of our schools went up one and the district went up another point. So uh, we continue to strive for better and better. Um, unfortunately, uh, in response to your question, you can't always do better every year because there's a certain point you start to max out and with our scores approaching 1,000, um, it's gonna be very difficult to keep on increasing. That doesn't say that we don't strive. One of the reasons we do so well is because there is a, um, feeling of excellence. The, everybody in that district um, looks for excellence. Um, I was driving down to a CSBA conference with Dr. Winger one day, who was our superintendent, um, and I said, Mark, so what is it, why are we so much better? What is, what is your viewpoint? And he was very candid and he said, it's professional development. Um, and as Christy was mentioning, um, we strive very hard for professional development. Um, and Common Core, which is coming up new, which is going to be a whole change, uh, we're ahead of the curve and we're already starting our professional development in that area. Okay, the next question is going to go first to Phil Ellis. It's going to come from Taylor Villanueva from COC Cougar News. A mother comes to you and says she's upset because her child is having trouble being bullied at school for social disorders such as autism. How do you think a board member should respond to the parent and what should be done uh, on the school's end to address the issue? Ah, very good question. Um, 
first off, it's not the board member's uh, position to do that. Uh, board members can only act as a group. We have no authority individually. Uh, so at that point in time, I would uh, take it upon myself to, to go directly to Dr. Winger to find the appropriate person to, to address that person's um, issue. And as an elected official, I would also ask that mother to make sure that she got back to me uh, to let me know how her problem was resolved. Now, bullying is a very big issue, and, and I don't have time to go into both bullying and uh, special needs kids because we have programs for all that. We have a special program uh, for bullying. Uh, we have just reviewed our board policy on bullying, and um, that is becoming more and more of a, a, of a hot button issue, particularly with the violence that's, that's come up in some schools. Uh, people are viewed as being the victims of bullying, and that's, there is some thought that that's a cause of problems. So we address that very, very seriously. And I can't go into detail with five seconds left. Okay, Christy Smith. You know, as Phil mentioned, as a board member, it wouldn't be our purview to directly solve the problem. But as a publicly elected official, I think one of the most important things we need to do is listen. So I certainly would listen to that parent's concerns and, as Phil mentioned, get back with the appropriate uh, responsible administrator at the site level, at the district level, to make sure that that parent's issue was resolved. We do take bullying very seriously in the New Hall School District. That has been, despite cuts, one of our ongoing areas of focus with student training is making sure that they have conflict resolution skills, that they have um, you know, tolerance education to learn that you know, not everyone is like them and they need to learn to accept the diversity on their campus and appreciate those around them. And I can say from personal experience, both of my children were at Valencia Valley Elementary School where we do have a number of autism specific classes and the way that the children were embraced at that site uh, was wonderful. There was a lot of inclusion on behalf of those younger students and I think that's something we see because bullying has been an emphasis, I think we're seeing younger generations really take it on and uh, want to make change. The question goes to Sandra Bull. Well, bullying, as they said, isn't a uh, it isn't something that a, the board has direct contact with. I personally do because I was an assistant principal, so I am aware of what's happening in a school. When a parent comes to a board member, as when I was an assistant principal, our board members would direct it back to the site. That's where it needs to be taken care of. They need to not go over the, the site principal's head and, this, and go right to the board. So I would direct them back to the assistant principal. But I also would work with that assistant principal or principal and um, see what kind of strategies are working. I don't think a board member should get involved in the daily, daily uh, running of a school at all. But I would certainly have a sympathy with that parent and try to uh, you know, look into it further. The policy that Newhall has on bullying is excellent. They have worked with their site administrators, which are uh, top-notch, as you can say, in, in pretty much every aspect. So um, bullying is a big issue. I do have first-hand knowledge of it, being an assistant principal, and um, I would certainly follow up and, and, and work with Mark Winger on that. And again, you're watching the 2013 Newhall School District Candidates Forum brought to you by KHTS, The Signal, COC Cougar News, and SCB TV. And if you miss any part of it, you'll be able to see and or read about it on all of these various organizations' websites. You've got hometownstation.com, you've got uh, cougarnews.com, signalscv.com, and scvtv.com. Next question is going to come from The Signal in the form of Luke Money, and it's going to go first to Sandra Bull. Thank you, Leon. Not that long ago, it wouldn't have been beyond the realm of possibility to walk into a classroom and see a biblical verse such as a proverb written on the chalkboard. What would be your reaction if you walked into a New Hall District school and saw something like that written on a smart board? Well, as you know, we have the uh, separation of church and state, and it's very clear. Uh, the only thing as I had as an educator is that if um, I, would, I wouldn't write it on the smart board, but if a student asked me a question, I would refer it back to their parent. That is something that the parent should be able to address. It isn't something that an administrator or a teacher or a board member should address to a, to a, to a student. That is between the parent and child. Um, it's very clear that there is a separation of church and state. I do, but as a teacher, I, and if it, is, if it is asked, you can answer any question of a, to a student. You just can't promote or uh, promote religion, any religion, uh, in the classroom. The question goes to Phil Ellis. If I saw that as a board member, 
um, I would take no immediate action because uh, that would not be the proper place for it, but I would look in to see why a um, biblical verse was on the board. Um, and there's any number of reasons it could be there. If it was being there to promulgate a religion, then that would be a, a problem. If it was there for some other purpose, um, I don't see a problem with that. Um, as we all know, uh, when I was on the uh, high school board, we had the same issue with whether you could teach the Bible, and there was a class. Uh, and the Bible has been used in many, many pieces of literature. And so people study the Bible not for a biblical, I mean, not for a religious purpose necessarily, uh, but it is used, if you, any reading that you do, you will come across biblical verses and, and usages. And if you have some familiarity with that, then you know where you're coming from. So um, again, if it's used for religious purposes, that would be a problem. If it's used for educational purposes without a religious bias, then I would not have a problem with it at all. The question goes to Christy Smith. I agree with both of those responses. First of all, you know, we, we all know and appreciate separation of church and state, and we want to make sure that we're honoring those boundaries. But second, we do want to look at what the context was of the lesson that was being provided and making sure that that wasn't out of bounds, the use of that language uh, in a lesson. And so certainly I would not follow up at that moment, but I definitely would look into it later on with the teacher, site administration, and then if necessary, district administration, to make sure that everything we were promoting was above board. Okay, the next question comes from AM 1220 KHDS News Director, Eric Smith. Thanks, Leon. One of the governing board's most important roles is the oversight of its executive staff, uh, more specifically the superintendent. Based on your knowledge of the challenges facing the district, what qualities would you look for if you had to select a new superintendent? That goes to Christy Smith first. Well, I, I have to say uh, on a personal note that Dr. Mark Winger would be very hard to replace. Um, he is an extremely talented individual and has contributed tremendously to the community and to our district. I would look for um, someone with intellectual tenacity. I would look for someone with uh, sharp leadership skills and a management style uh, that is top down when necessary and bottom up when necessary. I would look for someone who is an innovator and someone who wants to reach those next bounds of education and instruction. And I would look for someone with experience and someone really importantly with at least a fundamental knowledge of our community. Uh, we tend to be a very tight-knit educational community and just a community in general. And I would want somebody who comes in uh, with a feel for what that means. Same question, Sandra Bull. Well, I worked with Doc Winger in the Sulphur Springs School District before he became superintendent when he was assistant superintendent of curriculum. So I know his background. I've worked with him there. Um, he is a um, supreme individual as far as a superintendent. He, as Christy said, he does have the tenacity. He does have, he's very um, uh, strong in what he uh, believes and, and what he wants to achieve. He is um, very much in touch with the community. He realizes um, that we do have a uh, very many different cultures and languages and everything else, and he re can relate to that. He he um, he is behind his teachers. That is one of the things that I've discussed with the teachers at length. That he they feel like they have the backing of the superintendent. I would look for someone that would have all those qualities that would understand the the Newhall School District and uh, have his tenacity. Okay, and Phil Ellis. Um, I'd like to correct one thing. Our, our role really is only to um, look over the Superintendent's Act. As a matter of fact, any board, whether it's a uh, public board of the school district or a private board, the most serious um, role that a member of a board can do is to select the, the chairman or in this case the superintendent. I was fortunate to be on the school board when we uh, did select Dr. Winger and were we to need to select a new superintendent, I think we would go through a very similar process um, in inviting the different stakeholders to um, list what their desires would be. Um, and the desires that Christy mentioned were exactly what happened when we went through um, the different stakeholders. And when we did that a number of years ago when we hired Dr. Winger, uh, it was very amazing to see that the teachers, the parents, the uh, community as a whole, and the board members, we all had lists. We went through a facilitator. And our lists, maybe down at number 11 or 12, were a little off. but everything else was the same. And so it's, it's what the community needs and how we can respond and get the best education for our kids. We're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we're gonna return with more of this Newhall School District Candidates Forum. Here's a question for every parent out there. 
If you could fast forward 20 years to see how your kid's doing in life, would you do it? Well, we can't time travel yet, but we can see the future better with the new Common Core State Standards in our schools. They set clear goals for every stage of learning, and they're the same for everyone no matter what zip code you're in. So you can be sure your student is really grasping what she needs to know to get to graduation and beyond. Find out how it all works at CommonCoreWorks.org. kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. This message brought to you by FEMA. Home fires occur most often in winter. Keep anything that can catch fire at least three feet from heating equipment. And never use an oven to heat your home. Stay in the kitchen when frying, grilling, or broiling food. Turn space heaters off when you leave the room or go to bed. Make sure all vents are clear of snow and ice to allow carbon monoxide to vent outside. Have your furnace, heating system, and chimneys serviced each year by a qualified professional. Learn more at www.usfa.fema.gov. Welcome back to the 2013 Newhall School District Candidates Forum brought to you by SCV TV, The Signal Newspaper, COC Cougar News, and KHTS AM 1220 Radio. This is where we change things up. Now, the candidates haven't uh, been warned about this, but what we are going to do right now is interrupt our question and answer session and allow the candidates, each candidate, to ask a question of another candidate. So each of you will have 15 seconds in which to phrase a question and then pick the person that you're asking and that person will have 60 seconds to answer. So. Phil Ellis, if you wanted to ask one of the other people up, up here at the dais a question, what would it be and to whom would it be directed? Uh, I don't think I'd ask a question right now. That works. You don't have to take advantage of this opportunity. Christy Smith? Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, give us a little prep time on this one. Uh, I think I would ask uh, our opponent what her views are on um, our measury bond financing and uh, how she would foresee our projects going forward with that measury funding. And when you say our opponent, I assume you mean Sandra Bull. I do. Sandra, you have 60 seconds to answer, answer that. Well, thank you for the opportunity, Christy. <laughs> um, I think the Measure E, uh, the $60 million bond that was passed at, at, from the being at a board meeting and seeing the uh, finance, uh, them going over the finances, I think that they have um, have some a good budget. I think the ten ten thousand uh, dollars that they have for technology is going to be well spent. I think what they're going to do on the theater is um, is going to be nice. I don't really care for the. Uh, the design of, of the architecture of it. I think the design of the architecture of the theater is very modern, whereas you have an old building, so I would disagree with that. Uh, but I think it's going to give uh, a great opportunity to the district to be able to have funds to fix Wiley Canyon and Valley View and Meadows and do all the maintenance that they need to have done. I guess I'm done. Well, but you still have an opportunity to ask another candidate a question, if you can phrase the question in about 15 seconds or so. I would like to ask Phil Ellis that he has had, I believe, 18 years on the board, and what do you think was the most ex significant impact that you have made in those 18 years? Well, I've been on the New Hall School Board for eight years and the Hart Board for four, so that's only a total of 12. Uh, but oh, okay. Not there, not there 18 yet. Um, I think, um, I don't know if it's, it's hard to say what the most significant one was, but um, I was involved in both the passage of Measure E and Measure K, which significantly have improved the facilities at the, uh, the school district. When I was on the board early on, um, we had multi-track because we were so overcrowding, and we passed Measure K to build some new schools, which we did, and alleviated the over overcrowding, uh, which is very detrimental to uh, 
educating our kids, which is our primary focus, is, is getting the best educational vehicle to the children. And I think um, everything I've done on the board is based towards that, whether it was on a bond measure or anything else to do that. But the most significant thing was hiring Dr. Winger. Thank you for this interruption. We return to our previously scheduled uh, question and answer period. Next question comes from Taylor Villanueva from COC Cougar News, and it's going to go first to Sandra Bull. Thanks, Leon. Okay, reports from Sacramento recently revealed the state fell hundreds of millions of dollars short on the funding promises made by Proposition 30. If the school districts begin to receive their full funding guaranteed by Propositions 30 and 98, what would your top priority be with this funding and why? Wow. Well, I would think I would um, continue with the staff development of the teachers. I would continue with that. I would, um, that's a hard question really because um, there are so many things that, that have to be done in the district. Um, probably the technology in the New Hall School District isn't what um, other, other districts have. They, they don't have smart boards in every classroom. They have a different type of smart board. They don't, they're going to put in the um, document cameras. I think I would definitely upgrade the uh, technology of and beyond what they have budgeted. Um, I would probably, uh, again, look into the, the facilities as well. Uh, it's, it's unknown as far as what they're going to give us on, on that. So um, it's a, they can use the money everywhere. The question goes to Phil Ellis. Fully funded, what a pipe dream. We'll never see that in my lifetime. Um, the government likes to uh, create all sorts of things and never fund them. We have IDEA, which is a federal program which was promised to be funded at 47%. Congress has never gone over 18%. Uh, for the state to get up to our old funding, um, I don't see it happening. Were it to happen though, and to answer your question, uh, there are a number of programs that unfortunately all schools uh, and also in all school district, uh, different programs, we were, we cut less than most, most districts because we were pretty well financed and we, we watched our money. Um, but all the programs that we had to cut back on, those are where we would start taking, I mean, was it, we have new funds come in, we would build those all back up to where they were. Uh, and even without those, we're gonna try to spend our money wisely to get back up to, to where we were full programmed, whether the funding's there or not. The question goes to Christy Smith. Thank you, that's a great question because a lot of people aren't aware of what's happened over the course of the recession with school funding. Uh, New Hall School District experienced a 22% reduction in funding and under local control funding formula which takes into account the, the different funding mechanisms that you addressed, um, we are looking at being restored to our 0708 funding levels through the LCFF. If that were to occur, there's a couple of top priorities that I think we need to address. One is teacher and staff pay. We've had uh, staff and teachers who have not received a pay increase uh, through all of the years of the recession and certainly to keep pace uh, with price changes and all of that that we normally experience, I think they're deserving of that. They toughed it out with us, they took furlough days, uh, they deserve whatever level of pay increase we can give them at this time. Uh, we need funding to support the continuing transition to Common Core. We know that we have uh, $1.3 million in state funds which have already been allocated to that. Uh, as Phil mentioned, we need to restore programs, particularly counseling that were cut during the recession, and continue to maintain a healthy reserve for the next time there's an economic downturn so that our district weathers it as well as we have this time. You're watching the 2013 New Hall School District Candidates Forum brought to you by COC Cougar News, KHTS AM 1220, SCB TV, and The Signal newspaper. And the next question is going to come from The Signal in the form of Luke Money, and it's going to go first to Christy Smith. What is your view on charter schools, and would you consider approving one if you thought it met a need in the community served by the New Hall School District? Why or why not? I am actually not an advocate for charter schools, and I can tell you why. As someone who has been in policy analysis at the federal education level, I think that we're going to look at this a decade or two decades from now and realize that the charter school movement has fractured our public education system. You know, the law is clear on what charter schools are supposed to provide. They're supposed to provide an alternative in school districts where certain needs are not being met. They need to be well-funded. They need to have a fiscally sound financial program, and they need to be provided in facilities that are both appropriate and safe for children to learn in. 
We have not seen a charter petition like that be offered to us yet in the New Hall School District, but as I mentioned, I would be reticent to support a charter school period. I don't find that, you know, the um, panacea for all of our education woes comes in the form of a, you know, free market competition environment. I think what we need to look at is education reform from the bottom up and serving all of our schools and all of our children. You know, an article was in the New York Times yesterday and even as prolific as their charter school movement has been, they're currently only serving 6% of their students through charter schools. And charter schools, Sandra Bull. Well, I agree with Christy. I think that uh, a charter school, there has to be a need. Um, I. We have a charter school in Pacoima that did tremendous things because they had very low performing uh, students, low performing scores. They needed something to come in to, to change it up. Newhall School District has the highest in this valley as very, very high in this entire state. There isn't a need for a charter school to come in and uh, have students and to, to help them perform. The charter school that, that has been approved in this valley isn't, isn't servicing the low performing students. They have, um, they have a actually very high students. They only have one student that is free and reduced. And so the purpose of a charter school is for low performance and we don't have that. So I'd be against it. Question goes to Phil Ellis. Um, as Sandra just said, uh, the charter school movement started because of low performing schools pre pre predominantly in the inner city area. Uh, and it was a great idea. Uh, There's a lot of, lot of merit to it, it's giving choice to parents and so forth. Um, and it supposedly served a need, um, the need which we don't see here in Santa Clarita Valley. I liken Santa Clarita Valley to um, the Bola School up in uh, Los Altos, which is a big article in the, in the California Bar Magazine just recently where they're trying to create more of an elitist school, a private school on the public dime, if you will. Uh, and, and that's not the purpose for charter schools. Charter schools have their purpose. We have a couple of he here in town. Um, Jeff Brown is one of our community members who has, has one for, for students who have problems, and this is at the high school level, and they're more of self-study self and, and uh, so forth. So those work there. but. And we have an obligation if a charter school puts uh, a petition to us to analyze it and make sure it meets all the terms and conditions of the state. I have not seen that yet. New Hall School District Candidates Forum. We've got three of the four candidates here with us today. They are the challenge, uh, challenger, Sandra Bull, and current board members, Phil Ellis and Christy Smith. The next question is going to come from AM 1220 KHTS News Director Perry Smith, and it's going to go first back to Phil Ellis. Thanks, Leon. Uh, to varying degrees, all of the local public school districts uh, have lost a portion of their funding uh, that they receive based on daily attendance uh, to the impact of charter schools and private schools in the area. Uh, what can uh, local school districts do to address this, uh, specifically the New Hall District, to address that uh, loss of the funding and, and to make sure that parents make their local public school district their school choice? I'm not sure if I understand that. I mean, we have, we have lost funding uh, because of the budget cuts. I mean, um, and we do lose ADA uh, when we lose uh, children to either a private school or to any other alternative uh, location. Um, if that's what you're trying to address, I mean, what we're doing, and we're, we're doing it right now, is we are advertising the schools and letting parents know uh, what the schools are like in town. Um, we just... Uh, Yesterday, we, uh, Christy and I were both down in uh, downtown New Hall at the booth that the school local school districts had and the week before that we did that at the Kids Expo, um, trying to let parents know what programs the school district offers uh, and what uh, the excellence that we have in the, in the school districts. And you will find that the school districts in this valley speak highly of each other. We, we all, we're all well aware of that everybody does well here. New Hall obviously does much better. Uh, but, but they're all well-run schools, all have great administration, and the school board members here in town are all uh, very sincere in trying to make sure that the kids here in town get a very excellent education. Question goes to Christy Smith. That's a great question because we know that declining enrollment overall just based on the aging up of population in, in some of our sites uh, has been an issue. And then that, having that loss due to charter schools 
doubles the impact, if you will. So as Phil mentioned, what we're trying to do is just create public awareness about how great the public schools are in Santa Clarita. Um, you know, if you have children in the system, most people appreciate that. And then parent education is a really important part of what we do. In New Hall, we offer parent summits. We offer parent trainings. We currently are rolling out parent training on what the Common Core will mean for students and just creating that awareness so when parents do want to make a choice, they have all the information they need from our end of things to know that their kids are getting a really wonderful education. We wrap up this round with Sandra Bull. Well, um, the charter school that we have has impacted the New Hall School District as far as money. It, I think we've lost uh, like 100 students. Saugus District has lost over 200, and it has impacted the ADA uh, money. Um, New Hall School District is by far the most the excellent most excellent district in this valley. They have high scores. Um, they they have it out there. They have parent information nights. As Christy said, we have the parent information nights for the Common Core standards. They have, um, they're, they're renowned in this valley of how excellent they are. People move to this valley to go to the schools. They, um, it has a great reputation. When we hire teachers, this is considered a destination district. People want to work in this district. So, um, I think our reputation stands on itself, the New Hall School District and all the schools in the Santa Clarita Valley. If they want to make that choice, it's pretty hard to change their mind, but we couldn't get much better than they are. You're watching the 2013 New Hall School District Candidates Forum. We're going to take a quick break and wrap it up. Every year, more than 4 million homeless pets are killed at shelters across America. This number is heartbreaking, and it's very preventable with spay and neuter. Angel Dogs Foundation is a mobile, non-profit spay and neuter clinic with locations in the Santa Clarita Valley several times a month. With Angel Dogs Foundation, fixing your pet has never been more convenient or affordable. Our spay and neuter service includes a rabies vaccination, as well as a free microchip with registration, plus pain medication and an e-collar for dogs. Financial assistance is available for low-income pet owners too, with some programs offering free spay and neuter to qualified applicants. For more information, please call Angel Dogs Foundation today at 888- 504-7729 or visit angeldogsfoundation.org. I teach auto racing and I like to work on my own cars. Naturally, I like to change my own oil. Unfortunately, many do-it-yourselfers don't always go by the rules. The good news is there's a drop-off center near you that will gladly accept your used oil, free of charge and it only takes a few minutes. So please, recycle your used oil. Brought to you by CalRecycle and the City of Santa Clarita. Welcome back to the conclusion of the 2013 New Hall School District Candidates Forum brought to you by The Signal Newspaper, AM 1220 KHTS, SCV TV, and COC Cougar News. We're going to uh, continue with our question and answer session. The next question is gonna come from Taylor Villanueva from COC Cougar News, and it's going to go first to the challenger, Sandra Bull. What would you say to someone who felt that there should be only one elementary school district to service the entire Santa Clarita Valley, and why? Well, <clears throat> I've often wondered that myself, that we have um, three districts. It's actually four districts with Castaic. Um, I would say that it was set up to perhaps um, have local control. You have, uh, when you see a, a large school district like LA Unified, you can see what, what happens. When you have the four school districts, each, each district in this valley has unique students, unique qualities that address their community. So I think it works the way it does. I would think that if we had, uh, you have Heart District that functions very well with 20,000 students, but it's, it's a whole different ball game when you have elementary students. So I think it works the way it is. I think there is probably a lot of duplici duplicity, but the, uh, all the different school districts work well together. We share uh, staff development, we share uh, like the writing program, we share what's good. So, I think, it, I think it works well, and I think it, with local control in each part of the valley is important. The consolidation question, Phil Ellis. Uh, actually, I'm going to extend yours a little bit because the, the consolidation error 
and the question I always hear is why aren't all the school districts uh, unified? Um, and I would have a problem with being unified with the high school district because high schools have a tendency to suck the money away from the elementary schools. So, uh, but to your specific question, uh, we would then have 30, 40 schools in the district. We have 10 in, in New Hall School District right now. Um, and it works very well. It's easier to control that, uh, that number of schools uh, and it permits us to be more innovative. The writing program we've talked about a little bit here was, was designed by New Hall professional staff. Uh, and in a big district where it was all top down, um, you might not see that type of innovation. Every other school district in town now uh, copies off of the writing program. I, I think smallness makes more of an incubator type thing and more of an opportunity for uh, advancement. And I'm done, thank you. <laughs> Question goes to Christy Smith. I agree with what Phil just shared. You know, um, innovation comes when a district is small and maneuverable within 10 sites to be able to pilot a program and look at ways of teaching kids uh, a new writing methodology, a new mathematics methodology. When we're able to do that at, at a, in a very small um, environment, it actually works better. And I would assume that the person asking that question would be asking it, thinking that there's some savings to be captured by having a consolidated district when, um, you know, as we all know, when you look at LA Unified, that's not necessarily the case. Unfortunately, a lot of times waste comes along with uh, a big bureaucracy and a big enterprise. And I also think, you know, local accountability is incredibly important. I want to be able to be at the gas station or the supermarket and have a voter come up to me and say, hey, why did you guys spend money that way? Or what's going on with the construction at my site across the street? I think that's very important, and I think you get that with a small district. The uh, next question comes from Luke Money from The Signal. It goes first to Christy Smith. There are lawsuits currently underway in the Santa Cruz Valley that could end up changing the way people vote in elections, such as this one. What is your view on the lawsuits that claim that at-large elections violate the rights guaranteed by the California Voting Rights Act, and why do you feel that way? I'm going to be totally honest with you. That is not a one-minute answer that I can give you. Um, as someone who studied political theory in college, that is myriad issues come up with that um, regarding the franchise. But I will say locally, and I think our uh, election in particular is going to bear that out, we are looking at in the New Hall School District election this being probably the lowest voter turnout ever because in some neighborhoods we are literally the only thing on the ballot. So the cost to both us and to LA County in terms of hosting this election in an odd year as opposed to an even year election when there is so much more on the ballot is going to you know really create a stark contrast, which is what local school districts petition to LA County to be included on the even year election cycle as part of a way to ameliorate the claims that CVRA seeks to address, which is, you know, you want that greater voter inclusion. You tend to find that in those even year elections. So I would say LA County needs to re-examine this issue, particularly from the school board election point of view. But I would love to have a greater community dialogue specifically on CVRA because what's good for Palmdale is probably not going to be good for Santa Clarita. The question goes to Sandra Bull. Well, I can understand why they want to bring up the lawsuit. I think they want they want to see fair representation. But I think that, as Christy has said, uh, we have many we have many school districts that we can't get anyone to run. I I decided to run for this, and uh, they hadn't had a, a, any challengers for quite some time. Um, and this district and other districts. So it isn't that you can't get representation from the whole district in itself. If you had uh, the at-large uh, election, um, it doesn't necessarily mean you'd have anybody that would, would come up to even want to run. So I do understand that they do want it. They do want to have, like in East New Hall, they, they really want to have representation there because we have three people from Valencia that are running right now. Um, but I, and I think that if they could get someone to run, even now, I think that they would have res re representation. I think the elections are fair. Question goes to Phil Ellis. Well, I'm going to put my legal hat on as a lawyer and respond to your question, Luke. Um, I've read this law several times, and I've read the history of how it was passed and so forth. Um, and if I was less scrupulous as an attorney, I would be out there making all these lawsuits because the way this law is written, you can't lose as an attorney as a plaintiff's counsel. Uh, the law is designed uh, such that no matter what you do, you are in violation of the California Voters' Rights Act. Uh, I am hopeful that somebody will 
take a suit and find out that the California Voters' Right Act is um, violative of the Federal Fair Voting Act, which I believe it is. Um, I, I think by going to districts, particularly when you have a small district to begin with, if you have district votes, you'd be lucky to get five people to come out to vote. Um, it, it's, 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 it, it's just mind-boggling that somebody would pass a law like this. But there is motivations, there is political motivations for the law, and if you go back to history, it's, they're, they're clear what happened. But unfortunately, it's something that's not a very winnable suit. And the last question of the day is going to come from the KHTS News Director, Perry Smith. The Common Core Standards Initiative is without question changing the way schools are teaching subjects in our classrooms. Why is the smart board so much better than the chalkboard, and what are your views on technology in the classroom? And that goes first to Phil Ellis. That's a loaded question. I could take each part of that last five minutes. Um, Common Core really isn't changing things, uh, uh, changing subjects. We're still teaching math, English, and so forth. That's not changed. Um, and smart boards are not coming in because of Common Core. We've had smart boards in the school district for many years. Um, why is it, what, how is that changing education? It, just like anything at home, technology is changing how we view things and how we respond to things. Um, one thing we just did technologically wise, and it's not the smart board, is we, we've got microphones for teachers to wear. And it's amazing, the ones who are the most adamant against them are now the biggest fans. They realize that they can reach everybody. The same with the smart board. They can sit back and uh, create a learning environment that's much better, uh, much more responsive um, to the children. And, uh, and it sparks their interest. Kids are used to having moving things at home. They do that at TV, so it's, we just carry it forward and, and it's more, more natural for them to do that because that's what they're used to. Question goes to Christy Smith. That's really a great question because what the Common Core emphasis is, is taking what we already know, what the paradigm for common subjects is, and then applying a critical thinking element to them. So when we're looking at the use of smart board technology, it's highly interactive, which is what kids are used to now. They're used to engaging in what they're doing. And so this takes that to that level for them in the classroom. And then assessment under Common Core is also going to be highly interactive. These students will actually be sitting down with a piece of technology and the testing will be conducted in that way. So we want to be teaching them in a way that's highly interactive and engaging and then also in a way that they're going to be assessed so that we know that they're picking up that critical component piece of the learning which is to take common information and then apply it to a given situation. I'm going to wrap this one up with, uh, <coughs> with Sandra Bull. Well the smart boards, I would say having used the smart board in the classroom is probably the best innovation that we've had. Um, I was able to teach uh, as an administrator every Wednesday to resource students and teach math. And we, I used the smart board. I had students that um, just couldn't get it, but we had the animation of the math problem. We had the interaction. I could pull up the internet and go to other technology when I felt that the students just weren't getting it. There are so many things on that. When I had a lesson and I had to end the lesson, I could save that lesson, everything that I'd done. I did a lesson on fractions and using all different colors. I saved that, we went, and the next Wednesday we went back to the lesson and we continued on. When you're doing it on the chalkboard, you gotta erase it. Mm -hmm. it the smart board is, is the best thing that we've ever done. Teachers that, that use it um, can't say enough. Uh, when I left, we didn't have it in every classroom. Now Silver Springs does, and it, is, it will bring the learning and it'll, it'll reach all of the students not just the students that get it the first time. It'll reach all of the students. It is reaching all the students. And that concludes the question and answer portion of this uh, 2013 Newhall School District Candidates Forum. I'd like to thank the panel of journalists for, uh, for posing those questions from The Signal, Luke Money from COC Cougar News, Taylor Villanueva, and from AM 1220 KHTS, Perry Smith. The candidates each have, each of the candidates has 90 seconds within which to make a closing statement beginning with Sandra Bull. Oh, I get to be first again. First to begin with and first at the first. end. First and the last. <laughs> first and the last. Well, again, my name is uh, Sandra Bull or Sandy Bull, however you want it, how you ever want to say it. Um, probably the question is why me? Why would you want to choose me uh, over these excellent board members that you have? The Newhall School District is an excellent district. Um, it isn't like I'm coming in there to uh, say we need change. They're high performing. The board members have done a great job. 
Um, one of the things that I think is so excellent about the New Hall School District is not only are they high in academics, but they also are the only district that offers the, the music and performing arts in their budget, yet, yet they're still fiscally prudent. Mark Winger and this board has done a great job. I, the only thing that I feel that I would bring to this, to this board is a balance. I have an educational perspective. I know what it's like to be in the classroom. I know what it's like to administer a school. I know what it's like to work with bullies. I have all that experience. Um, I, kn I know what it's like to uh, work with gate students. I've worked with them all. I had the experience and I would have a different perspective. Um, even, even as much as when they choose, when the board was choosing to, to visit the schools for a board visit, I, I know how much that impacts a school for a, an administrator and those teachers, just to have a board visit. I would have a different perspective. I would have a educational perspective, which would be, I think, bring a balance to the board. A closing statement from Phil Ellis. Thank you, Leon, and thank you all for the, your questions. Uh, it's very enjoyable. Um, I'm here today because I want to continue my service to the community as a board member. I wouldn't be here today if I didn't think that I was qualified, uh, and I think that my experience or the my time tenure has shown the experience and the value that I can bring to a board. Um, a board member is a policy-making person, not a administrator. It is our job, as we said earlier, to hire the superintendent who does the administration and does that. I come with a perspective of a community member, perspective of a parent, had three sons who have gone through the schools. I know how parents feel and I am uh, able to relate to the educational needs from a parent's standpoint and from a community standpoint and understanding the value of a excellent school district and what it brings to the community. Um, you'll hear some of the businesses complain because their uh, new hires aren't educated right. Well, we're fixing that. Our, our students are all educated properly and they're all leaving the New Hall School District well educated. Uh, and I think that uh, I can continue to do that and I look for your vote. And I would like to urge everybody who is watching this to get your neighbors to vote. As Christy mentioned, we're anticipating a very low turnout. A school board uh, position is very important to our community. Please get your friends to vote and you will live with what you get. Christy Smith, you get the final word. Thank you, Leon. Thank you, panelists, for your insightful questions. It has been an honor and a privilege for me to serve as a New Hall School District Governing Board member. I am very committed to the concept of public accountability and public service at the same time. As, as I have mentioned to numerous people, being a school board member is probably one of the best jobs in public service that one can have. On any given day, I can visit any one of our 10 school sites and see the direct consequence of decisions that we make as a board, and it is very rewarding to be able to do that. Um, my experience, as I have mentioned previously, both professionally and in volunteer work, has all been in the field of public policy and public education specifically. I feel like I, after my first four-year term on the board, am now very well poised and prepared to serve another four years. And I'm committed to being uh, someone who is accountable to the public. We spend, as a school district, $53.5 million of your taxpayer money. I want you to be able to hold me to account for how those dollars are spent. You've also given us the privilege of passing Measure E, which has given the school district $60 million worth of funds to make our district better for all the children of this community. And I feel committed to seeing those projects through to make sure that we're providing what we promise to you as a community. So I'd appreciate your vote on November 5th. As Phil mentioned, please get friends, neighbors, colleagues out to vote. Your vote is tremendously important this time around. Thank you. This has been the 2013 Newhall School District Candidates Forum. And on behalf of KHTS, The Signal Newspaper, COC Cougar News, and SCB-TV. I'd like to thank the candidates for joining us. Sandra Bull, Phil Ellis, and Christy Smith. And thank you for joining us. I'm Leon Warden reminding you to vote on November 5th.